Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify, Apple, or Google, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2017. They're one of my go-to exchanges. They have 10 plus million users, 200 150 plus cryptocurrencies, and they're available in 150 countries. You can also trade precious metals and equities on this platform. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Friendly reminder, a great way to support the podcast is to buy official merchandise and gear. Link will be in the description to the store. There are also Fire Gary Genser gear that you can purchase t-shirts and hats and much more. Thank you for your support. All right, folks, <laughs> guess who crawled out from under his rock to come talk a bunch of nonsense on TV today? Former SEC chairman Jay Clayton goes on CNBC and makes some ridiculous statements, and it just shows how far the SEC has fallen from their core values of protecting investors. They lack integrity. So let me play the clip of what Jay had to say and what the industry is saying. People are really upset by this. So let me play the clip here. Let's take this to a you know a very high level on the regulatory side. What you're hearing from the leaders of the regulatory organizations is if we're not losing cases, if we're not being pushed back on by the courts, we're not doing enough. That, think about that for a second. That is a fundamental shift in how we as Americans view the role of the government. I, I don't want to be in a place where I know the government is going to bring cases they think they're going to lose. Imagine you're the person who is the subject of that case. Just now, we're talking about they, corporations. Yeah, but see if they can. And if, if they're not stopped, they're going to, yeah. Right, but this is an ethos now, which is yeah. you know, unless we're losing, we're not bringing enough cases. You know, that may be fine for private litigants against each other and, and think about But when you have the power of the state and you're... You're supposed to only bring cases and only make rules that you think are going to pass judicial muster. Folks, did you did you catch that? I know on its face, you may say, well, what is what does this mean? Now, he wasn't talking about crypto specifically, but it involves crypto because, as he said, at a high level. Right. So he's encompassing all markets, crypto stocks and so forth. But his statements are, if we're not losing cases, if we're not getting pushback from the judge, it means we're not suing enough businesses. What the hell kind of strategy is that? You're a government agency. You're supposed to represent the people. You're you're funded by the tax dollars of the people. And your goal is to go around suing businesses? No, your goal is to protect investors. And if there's a business or a company that's breaking the law, you go after them and take the appropriate action. It's not just to throw out frivolous uh, lawsuits and, and throw anything at the wall and see, see if it sticks. That is nonsense. And here... Cameron Winklevoss said it really well. He said, a must watch. Former SEC chairman Jay Clayton describes the new and deeply un-American ethos of the SEC under Gary Genser. If we're not losing cases, we aren't suing enough businesses. This is a total abuse of power. Well said. So this is nonsense, folks, but we're seeing it. And, and remember, Jay Clayton, let me give you some of his history. On his last few days at the SEC, the man sued Ripple and ran out the door, right? Caused a lot of confusion in the market with Bill Hinman providing the free pass speech for Ethereum. We know that was a backroom deal with the Ethereum folks in consensus, right? The Bill Hinman emails uh, revealed that. And he, he obviously is corrupt because only Ethereum got that free pass while the other altcoins were in purgatory. Now, you may say, well, Jay didn't give the speech. Bill Hinman gave the speech. Yes, but guess who signed off on it? Jay Clayton. He was the chairman. And then there's video clips of him endorsing that speech. And then they put it on the SEC website. So Jay is kind of like the guy who started the fire. And now he's pretending to be a firefighter. <laughs> right? He he set the house on fire. He ran out and, and then came back with the fire department and said, you know, um, hey, guys, I, I'm a firefighter, too. Let me help you put it out. Right. Because now he's working in the crypto industry, but he's still spewing a lot of garbage and nonsense. So here's what 
Tyler Winklevoss had to say. Uh, he said, not to mention the SEC has aggressively expanded its legal theories with no identifiable mandate from anywhere or any public demand for it. And trying to impress Senator Warren doesn't count. <laughs> so that last sentence there is a shot at Gary Genser, who we know is buddy buddies with Elizabeth Warren. He uses her talking points. She sends him questions and answers ahead of hearing. We know the two of them are two peas in a pod. Well, I should say three peas because Brad Sherman should be in that as well. So unbelievable what is happening here. And even a meta lawman weighed in on Cameron Winklevoss's thoughts. He said, yes, I agree. This is a must watch. And as you watch, remember, this gentleman authorized the SEC case against Ripple on his last day in the office. So Jay Clayton is a clown. And I can't believe they're letting this guy on TV. And of course, the folks at CNBC did not ask him about the Bill Hinman emails. Of course they didn't, folks. We, we know how the game is played here. Now, attorney John Deaton weighed in, and I, I love what he had to say. He said, this is exactly what the judge in the Ripple case was alluding to when she said SEC lawyers were not maintaining a faithful allegiance to the law. Now, remember, that, that was Judge Sarah Netburn, right? calling out the SEC saying, you lack allegiance to the law. You can't have it both ways. Is Hinman's speech uh, you know, guidance or is it his personal opinion? The, the SEC was trying to have it both ways, right? Clear hypocrisy. Jo uh, John continues, he says, you're supposed to have a good faith basis to being a case, meaning you believe you can win by applying the law. You don't wait until a judge tells you otherwise. Shameful on SEC enforcement director and Gary Ganser. And he tagged both of them. I love it. Uh, Jay Clayton needs to go back to under his rock and just hide. Like, dude, you caused a lot of problems. You didn't do jack when you were there. You didn't help push any type of regulatory clarity. All you did was leave a trail of confusion with the Ripple lawsuit, the Ethereum free speech, and much more. He didn't even approve a Bitcoin spot ETF. So Jay Clayton can just fuck off. It, you know, I don't even want to see this guy. He's so annoying. And then uh, I'm hearing rumors that he, in fact, is not happy with Gary Genser, maybe because Gary Genser crossed the line by going after Coinbase and some of these regulator, uh, regulated entities. But who knows? Um, but this guy's a clown, man. Um, now let's move ahead here. Speaking of Gary Genser. Now, I remember uh, just a couple of days ago, I shared the news of Maxine Waters is giving the SEC and the Treasury one week to weigh in on the Republican crypto bill. That is the Patrick McHenry and Glenn Thompson, Congressman Glenn Thompson bill, which is a great bill, by the way. And here, John Rizzo of, uh, let me see, he's part of, he's public affairs at the Clyde Group. He, he weighed in on this. He said, what's going on here? In 2022, Genser killed Waters' efforts to do a crypto bill by making broad complaints, but never offering an act or any actual feedback. Waters not letting it happen again. She's drawing out and pinning down Genser on the bill so he can't tank the deal again. Now, I don't know about this. It, there seems to be something going on with Gary and, and Maxine Waters. Maybe once again, Gary crossed the line and, and these folks are starting to distance themselves. L let's see. But here, Cody Carbone, who I've had on the podcast of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, he, he weighed in on John Rizzo's comments. He said, bingo, Genser lobbied against the 2022 stablecoin bill because the SEC had no authority in the legislation. Waters is putting him on record. Will the admin get together and work on a unified response? Question. Also, why was a letter not sent to the CFTC? Question. So, uh, you know, we'll see, guys. There's something cooking up here. I hope Waters flips on Gary, but <laughs> I don't think that's likely, right? Because she's Democrat. Gary's Democrat appointed. We'll see. Maybe she's coming to her senses. We'll see what happens. Now, regarding the Bitcoin spot ETF race, right? Everybody's trying to get their Bitcoin spot ETF. We had news earlier this week that Kathy Wood's ARK Invest, they want to win that spot ETF ahead of BlackRock, and they were saying they have a better chance. Well, earlier this morning, approximately 9 a.m., ARK Invest updated its Bitcoin spot ETF trust filing. The update adds identical surveillance sharing language as is found in the BlackRock filing. The update puts ARK ahead of BlackRock in the race to a first approval. So game theory, folks. 
No one wants to get left behind. And the fact that Ark is taking, you know, or copying the BlackRock uh, filing details and putting in their filing is interesting. It shows uh, these folks, uh, it's a race. And look, Fidelity, we heard the rumors, they're about to file as well. So uh, I love it. Competition is good. We need more players to be in here and uh, offer ETFs. Now, Speaking of crypto regulations, apparently Canada is maybe doing a bit of a 180 here. Coinbase tweeted out the following. Big news from Canada. Canadian lawmakers have published a comprehensive report supporting blockchain technology. This is great, guys. And here's the headline on their blog post. Canadian lawmakers back blockchain with landmark recommendations. The TLDR is the Canadian House of Commons Parliamentary Standing Committee on Industry and Technology has published a comprehensive report recognizing blockchain as an emerging industry with significant economic opportunities, emphasizing consumer protection and regulatory clarity, advocating for a national blockchain strategy, and proposing an innovative regulatory approach to stablecoins, highlighting Canada's potential to become a leader in the crypto economy. Folks, this is bullish. For a while, Canada seemed draconian in some of the ways they were approaching crypto, and now it seems they're doing a 180, as we saw Hong Kong and China do a 180. And I've said it for many years, any country that does not allow this innovation and, and, and technology to flourish in their economy, they're writing their economic death sentence. This is the future, folks. We're headed to the token economy, governments, and every every the public and private industry will be using blockchain. Everything will run on the blockchain. Now, we got some big news from Ledger. Yes, the hardware wallet company. Uh, Ledger launches custodial trading network for institutions. So we continue to see the uh, off and on ramps being built for these big institutional investors. So the TLDR here is crypto security firm Ledger launched a new trading platform for institutions named TradeLink. In an announcement, the company highlighted the growing need to mitigate third-party risk. So I don't need to get, go into all the details, uh, it, but it is news that is relevant because it includes you know the on and off ramps for these big players, the infrastructure for the big uh, big money. So great to see that this is happening. Very bullish news. Now, <laughs> this news is unbelievable. So apparently, FTX is inviting investors to register to uh, as they start to rebrand and restart the exchange. Boy, I'm not going anywhere near anything FTX related, unless, unless folks, let's say BlackRock buys them out or Fidelity and then, you know, merges the technology. And then I would, you know, maybe go on this platform, but this bar brand is tarnished. It is forever tarnished. It's like Enron, right? Go ahead and start, try to start a company by the name Enron. Not smart. Same thing. Nothing FTX. And I don't even want to go to any technology they were using or, or you know, any platform, any app or anything like that. But <laughs> man, we'll, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> the Wall Street Journal is reporting on this. And I, and I think everybody should just stay away. Don't use this crap. We don't know what the hell is going on. And uh, you look, they're still, they're still trying to recover the funds after all the fraud that Sam Beckman fried uh, committed. Now, MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy has acquired an additional 12,333 Bitcoin for approximately $347 million at an average price of $28,136 uh, per Bitcoin. So... <laughs> Pretty amazing. This their total Bitcoin holding is now at one hundred and fifty two thousand three hundred and thirty three. That is incredible. My God, this man is holding a lot of Bitcoin. Uh, so it's probably it's worth about just over four point five billion dollars. Now, my concern for MicroStrategy was in the bear market. Were they going to be able to survive? And thankfully, they did. Now, I, I'm not the biggest Michael Saylor fan. In fact, I, I hate that at certain points he was kind of lobbying and putting out certain narratives about uh, all coins and their securities and all that. I don't like that, but I also don't want to see him fail because it would be detrimental to the market. Uh, we know all coins move a Bitcoin. So if MicroStrategy was to go on there, boy, would that have be, it would have been a brutal hit. But thankfully he didn't. And I think, you know, Michael Saylor is going to make out well as he's gone through the bear market. And that's the hard part. Bull markets are easy. Going through the bear markets are, are, are the hard part. So he continues to buy. Um, but guys, as Bitcoin continues to increase in valuation, 
this is going to work out really well for them with the amount of Bitcoin they're holding. It's pretty incredible. And, and you know, with BlackRock and all these folks jumping in, it's it's pretty incredible. Now, uh, I want to wrap it up here with some Corium news. Corium is, of course, a partner of the channel. First is Corium smart tokens are setting the path for customizable tokenization solutions built on layer one infrastructure. They shared an article here talking about uh, several innovative use cases from IP rights to supply chain management and much more. In addition, uh, they provided an update today acknowledging that approximately 20 million Corium tokens from last year's airdrop as yet undistributed are destined for solo holders. Given a thorough analysis of the present crypto landscape, the collective decision leans towards deferring the distribution for the greater good of the project. Rest assured, a clearly defined schedule for distribution within uh, this year will be communicated timely, reinforcing trust and synergy within the community. So big updates from Corium. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out Corium's website or their Twitter profile. All right, folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the five-star rating button on the podcast platforms, and I'll talk to you all later. 